Good afternoon. My name is, is David Lepofsky. I'm chair of the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee. To my uh, extreme right, physically but not politically, is uh, Lauren uh, McDonald, a law student and uh, an active member of the ODA Committee from London. To my immediate right is Catherine Bremner, mother of a child with a disability, active regional contact for the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee in, uh, in Durham Region. To my left, Patricia Bregman, active Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee member and one of the country's top legal and policy uh, thinkers on disability issues. The Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee is an, a voluntary, uh, nonpartisan coalition of individuals, both people with disabilities and people without, and many, many community organizations across Ontario, which organized over 10 years ago for the sole purpose of winning the enactment of the legislation that you now have before you. We have been involved and indeed spearheading this campaign for over a decade and are delighted to have reached uh, the point that we have of having this bill now before your committee for consideration. The ODA committee wants to com commend the government, Premier McGuinty, Minister Butriani, for bringing forward Bill 118 after holding effective open consultations, after bringing to the table all the major stakeholders, people with disabilities, people from the business community, from the municipalities, hospitals, those you've heard from and will hear from before this committee. For the first time ever, they were brought to the table to discuss how such legislation should look. And the significant progress in this bill is due to that consultative process. We want to commend all three parties for having voted in favor of this bill on second reading. We hope you will do the same on third reading. We also want to commend all three parties for their unanimous recognition now that the existing Ontarians with Disabilities Act 2001 must be strengthened. And finally, we thank you for holding these hearings, for holding them across Ontario, and for making them open, accessible, and for our understanding, for the first time ever, televised gavel to gavel, even outside when hearings are held outside Toronto. Let me take our time to cover the key points in our amendments package. Our amendments package, which you have before you, reflects not only months of our preparation now, but over a decade of consultations at the grassroots around the province in an effort not to ask what would be best for people with disabilities, but would be, what would be best for us and large and small business and the broader public sector and the government. Our amendments, or the core themes in them, we are pleased to see, have been echoed, reflected, and endorsed by many an organization that have already come before you, not only from the disability perspective, but from other perspectives as well. We are also uh, delighted to be able to table with you an amendments package which we believe is reasonably tailored where possible, to reflect specific amendments which two of your parties, the Liberals and the New Democrats, tabled three years ago when the previous bill, Bill 125, was before the legislature. You'll see fully 12 of our proposed amendments reflect those uh, earlier uh, matters which both the Liberals and the NDP were not only prepared to vote for in 2001, but which in the 2003 election were promised to us as being the minimum of what new legislation would reflect. Let me try to focus on what we believe to be core priorities which are reflected not only in our brief, but in the message you've heard from so many others. I do not put these in order of priority among themselves. And in offering them, I speak in general terms because in each case, we offer you specific suggestions, but are attempting to be as flexible as we can as to how they are achieved. First, it is widely recognized that while the bill sets an end date 
for when accessibility is fully to be achieved and sets one specific timeline, the interim framework for standards development committees. It does not set time frames for other major steps that the government must take when implementing this bill. We propose that to the time frames that are in the bill should be added more time frames to cover each major implementation step. We are flexible as to what they will be because we don't want to come up with things which are unrealistic and which will fail. We also note that while some other presenters have focused on whether the one time frame, interim time frame in the bill, five years, should be reduced to three, given the actual framework of the provision that that is found in, reducing it from five to three actually doesn't accomplish anything in terms of the rate of barrier removal. In fact, it may slow things. Our second proposal or theme in our amendments, we propose that each major phase of this bill's implementation should be undertaken in an open, accessible, and accountable way. There are several ways to do that. One is to make sure that the standards development committees actually meet in the open so that we can see what they're doing, large and small business could see what they were doing, the media could see what they were doing, everybody could see what they were doing. There should be no secrets here, there's nothing to be secretive about. Openness promotes accountability and confidence. Those who've come before you expressing worries about what this bill will achieve will have those worries reduced, we believe, when they see how it operates in practice. Openness only makes for better, more effective decisions and confidence. Openness also means that the standards development committees and other major bodies that will have a role in this should have a mandate to, indeed a duty, where appropriate to consult with stakeholders including people with disabilities. We've learned through this process of developing this bill that both openness and consultativeness works. Our third priority or theme in our amendments is that the process of developing standards should be more arm's length from the government. That's not to say it should be totally independent of government and that's not to say that government shouldn't have an important place at the table. However, it, it would be more appropriate for the process of developing recommendations to government be done outside government with government taking part. What government then does with those proposals is, of course, something which would take place in government and for which government would take the credit or the heat. We propose one way in our brief of doing that, but we're frankly open to any number of other approaches. Fourth, the core of this bill, as you've all identified through your questions, has been the development of standards. And until standards are developed, this bill doesn't require anyone to actually do anything. That is leading to some to have the concerns they have about the 20-year end date. If people saw more progress sooner, the 20 year end date would be less of a concern. Moreover, standards cannot solve every kind of barrier. We therefore propose that the bill be enhanced to provide measures that can be implemented even before standards are set, that could take years, and which will help address particularly both preparing people for the standards process once they're enacted and addressing barriers uh, which the standards may not be able to cover. Again, our brief has specific proposals. Um, for, uh, fifth, our second last area of priority builds on something that many have said for years about this kind of legislation, but none have actually covered the way we'd like to see it covered in the future. It is said over and over again that we need to educate the public on disability and accessibility. That's true. What's been tried in the past, both by the public and the nonprofit charitable sector, have been leaflets, lectures, TV ads, and so on. Now, they're helpful, but they're transitory. We propose something new. We propose that the bill implement a permanent, long-term, mandatory education program targeting two communities who can make a difference. The first, kids. Let's have kids grow up learning about this in school, not months or weeks, but maybe even just a day or two. 
Let's have a mandatory curriculum, it could be set locally or the province can offer an option, but it would help the next generation of kids knowing more than any of us ever did about this before they ever become employers, store owners, and so on. Second target group, professionals who could make a difference. We propose that in future, those who are going to get a license to practice in a profession that can make it a difference in terms of accessibility should have as part of their training learning about accessibility. The prime example, we propose others, are architects. Put simply, no one should be able to get an architect's license in the future or other permit to design the built environment if they haven't at a minimum at least learned how to design a barrier-free built environment. That'll require some changes. The best people to design that curriculum are the professional bodies themselves, but that's what we propose. Finally, our last area of recommendation because we're embarking on a 20-year enterprise, we need an independent process to monitor how we're doing. Not a large bureaucracy, may not even have to start for several years, but something that can be the conscience of the province. To commend those who are doing well, to egg on those who could do more, and to give us all suggestions of what could be done. Many ways to do that. Generally, that's our proposal. Let me conclude in uh, one sentence, or in one uh, paragraph, if I may, by saying that this is now a good bill. With our amendments, it can be transformed into a legacy bill. It can be a legacy for those who brought in the bill, all who voted for it, all of us who've campaigned so long for it, and a legacy for the many people who sadly fought for this bill but did not live long enough to see it live, uh, live long enough to see it passed into law. We thank you for this opportunity to present and would be pleased to do whatever we can to help this committee with its deliberations. Thank you very much, Mr. Leposki. Uh, uh, you have used all the 15 minutes, but we, you certainly made your point very clear. We thank you for coming with your friends, and uh, we may hear the next uh, presenter after. Thank, thank you, you again. Sir.